Welcome to Chisel Restoration Part 2. Right, here it is. So, don't go and switch off now. You've watched so much. This, yeah, because you might be disgusted at the fact that this stone is a double-sided stone. It cost about seven or eight pound. Um, but I use it as my stone for wearing out. If you buy loads of expensive stones, some of them are going to wear out quicker than others. So why not buy a cheap one to wear out? So that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm also, it's on a long term test for a video. And this thing is actually worth its weight, it really is. You get what you pay for? Yeah. But if you're recommissioning a chisel like this, do you want to use your best stones and wear them down? I certainly don't. Back on like this. Stone was corrected just before I put it on. I use the diamond plate just to make sure I'm happy with it. And it's going grey, which is nice. I know this stone produces a makes it go quite grey, quite dull. Some stones put a sheen to it, this just makes it go grey, which is fine. So a bit longer on here, and then I'm ready to move up to the next stone. Yeah, a bit longer. So when I'm flattening the back of on this stone, I like to really vary the how I'm cutting on it so I'm walking around the stone a bit of pressure on the back here now And the problem with these cheap stones is the slurry, but get used to it. It's not the end of the world. It's a bit of slurry. It comes off. Wow. So now that's really grey. Look at that. There's a few extra shines here. A bit more attention. That corner. Can you see that corner now? There it is. Look, look at that little thing there. Tiny. It won't go, not just yet, not on this round anyhow. But I love how grey it makes the chisel. A bit mad, isn't it? Right, next stone, back in a minute. Right, this is my not very happy 6,000 grit stone, but it was quite expensive. Uh, it was lapped the last time after the last time I used it, so I don't need to do anything to it. And I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes on here because this is a good stone. It's a beautiful stone. Um, it is quite flat even though it looks a bit bumpy. Right, that silver's going. That dull silver. Right, the dull silver's going. It's starting to shine a little bit more. Beginning to see some reflection. I'm going to swap that now for the other side of this one, which is an 8000. Let's see what this 8000 does. So both the 3000 and 8000 sit in between my sitting between my 1000 diamond stone, my 1200 grit wet water stone, my 6000 grit water stone and my 10,000 grit. So there's a good place for this one. 
let this one take the brunt of some of the some of the groins and then use the better stones for um, it staves the wear on those. I'm getting there now. Gonna come right up to there. So the other thing with this 8000 is it doesn't polish like you'd expect. It still leaves the steel quite grey and the so it's something in the makeup of the of the stone. It doesn't it sort of doesn't allow it. Let me just wipe that on my apron. It sort of doesn't allow it to um make reflections. Look at that nothing. Nothing at all. But it does, you can see it's taking it off. It does a good job. So let's just finish on this stone and then we'll go to the 10,000 grit Sun Tiger. That's it, that's all I'm doing on there. As I say, no major reflection off that, but it gives it a chance. And then this bad boy comes in. This was not a cheap stone. 10,000 grit, Sun Tiger. It's just a beautiful stone. It wants to grab the chisel. It doesn't really want to let you so it's a sign you've got a good flat back. Again, this was prepared last time when I finished with them. So when I finished with the stones, I'd rub them together um, in the Japanese method, not so much the diamonds plate and diamond flattening. No, do it in the Japanese method. Right, let's have a look. So you can see it's not I'm not spending too much time on it. And we can now see some reflections starting. So that's pretty good. I'll go and get the Nagura and we'll work up some some slurry. This is the Nagura. The Nagura for this stone. This builds up the slurry that then makes the cutting paste. Also you can see it sort of gives it a clean as well. Right. Starting to see the reflection. There's the camera. There you go, there's my head. There's the camera, there's a light. Yep, it's starting to. I'll come back in a minute. Right, there you go. Magura back on. Just giving it a clean, making sure there's no high spots that are bothering me, which sometimes can end up with these black spots. 
where it's just the polish and it's just polished so there you go that's where we're up to now you as you can see it's um there's a reflection of the sash cramps there you go there's the little man looking at the plane there you go so as you can see it's getting there it's really getting there now this mirror the mirror finish on the back will improve with age so this chisel now will never go back to a coarse stone on the back it's it's i've made the mistake i've rectified it it's taken it's now quarter to six and i'm still having a go at it i'm still working this chisel so all over the stone polish in the back don't even mention charlesworth method on a chisel doesn't work it's not worth trying not if you're going to use that chisel for all sorts of things might be okay for some things but no don't even don't even go there clickbait right up and down a few times you can see the polish where, the, where it's sort of polishing and it's making it sticky spots it's wobbling around so it's pulling splashes of probably coarser grit which is probably why I'm not getting super shiny just yet but hey and now I'm easing off the pressure really easing off the pressure almost no weight at all sticking again as you can see not holding on to it there you go give the wipe down and that's it that's the back of the chisel done so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a couple of spots of water don't bother with the spray spots of water is great so put it on the angle again lift it up see the see the moisture come out the front that's my 25 degrees just a little bit higher than that gently push it forward locking the hands and arms we're not going to dig into this gorgeous stone I don't really want to lift it because in lifting it you can change your angle slightly that's it we're done don't know how many times that was let's have a can we have a look at that so we've got a polished edge all the way across the front it's just on that very tip I might lift it up a bit higher so you can see so that's my 20 that that's my 25 there you go there's my 30 I'm going to come up quite a bit more just to give you a definite micro bevel that you can see this chisel is going to be amazing I mean it's I can tell by the steel I can tell by how much it's had to be worked this is going to be just like mine because this is from this set for somebody and uh, it's going to be amazing chisel the back off again because I've just might have created a tiny micro burr on the back the wire edge wipe the back down wipe the bevel down and that's it there you go you can see the reflections let's have a let me dry it off right see if I can get the cramps again there you go there are the cramps there's the little man and if I pull that down there it's a little bit it's not too bad actually look at that 
look at that. The only problem really is that little bit there. Right at, oh, there's me, look, hello. Beautiful, isn't it? Uh, and then just a tiny micro bubble, there you go. There's the light hitting it now. Let me just wipe that. So there's a, there's a biggish bevel, which was me just doing, doing that, but there's a micro bevel right on the tip. Let me just catch some light for you. Oh, come on. And yeah. And there you go. Right the way down that edge. That's it. Job done. Camellia oil. Uh, I've, I don't know whether you've noticed, but I've periodically been using my wet cloth with, with what's it on it to just rub around the ferrule. And uh, that saves using Brasso. So that's come up nice. It doesn't need Brasso. It just needs some of the oxidization. Tape. Next thing to do will be sort the handle out. But essentially, that's all the hard work out of that chisel now. And it looks great. Really pleased with it. Anyhow, an insight into sharpening and flattening a back. So thanks for that. And I will see you on the next video. Cheers.